Time for Friday's TJ's Top 5, a.k.a. TJ's Big Ass Grab Bag, ladies and gentlemen. DJ Mikey D, there you go. All right, kaboom. (laughs) Guess who stepped in the room? TJ here. Listen, yesterday Chris Brockman was talking about the Steelers and the Chiefs and how he thinks the Chiefs are just going to destroy the Steelers. Yes. And then Rich brought up a bunch of what ifs, like what if this happens? What if that happens? And what if was also a title of a Marvel comic. It was one of my favorite comics from Marvel. And it gives you you a bunch of of scenarios. Like what if uh, Hulk had killed Wolverine or... What if the Fantastic Four had all had the Look same at power? Look at what if Doctor Doom was a hero? Oh, you know, I, I, I love one. what if, and it got me thinking about sports what ifs, guys. There's hundreds upon hundreds of sports what ifs that I could have put in here, but of course I only have a short amount of time, so I gave you five. Right? This is going to be TJ's top five sports what ifs. All right. All right. Now coming in at number five, a lot of people might not realize this. Back in 1992, the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Atlanta Braves they struck a deal for the 1990 MVP, Barry Bonds. Okay, Jim Leland, who was the manager of the Pirates, lost his mind. The trade got rescinded, but it it got me to thinking, man, what if that trade would have went through? How would this have changed baseball, especially for the Braves? Because, you know, they went on to lose the World Series that year to Toronto, and then in 93, they won 104 games. They lost to Philly, and then they won the World Series in 95 and lost in 96 to your Yankees, Rich. But if you put Barry Bonds on those Atlanta Braves teams in the early 90s, Yes. That's that's a dynasty right there. You got to figure the Braves are going to win three, four World Series probably. It kind of changes everything. I, I wanted to say what if Barry Bonds didn't leave Pittsburgh, but if you knew anything about his time there, he was gone regardless. But maybe Barry stays in Atlanta if he gets traded. Changes everything. Maybe the Yankee dynasty of the 90s doesn't happen. That's untrue. Because Barry Bonds is with the Braves. You just you never know. And that's just one of my what ifs. Okay. Uh, coming in at number four, the tuck rule. Very simple. What if the tuck rule wasn't called? Okay. Charles Woodson hits Brady. The ball flies out. Oakland gets the ball. What well, they happens? They would have missed the obvious rule. <laughs> I mean, it would have been an officiating blunder. <laughs> but what happens there? Do the Raiders go on to become a dynasty? Is Tom Brady the GOAT? Is Bill Belichick the gold standard? What happens? Do the Steelers head to the Super Bowl and then add to their collection of rings? Does the greatest show on turf go back to back and really change the game of football? All these things could have happened. But the tuck rule was called, and the Patriots went on to do what they did. Oh, correctly. And, uh, you know, that's where we're at. But what if? What if it didn't happen? Coming in at number three, I'll make this one super quick. It's just the the pain will never go away for me, and that is what if he did. But what if Dez caught it? I mean, I've watched this play literally 500 times in my life. I, you can't ever tell me this wasn't a catch. And what would that have done? How would this have changed football? People say that... Aaron Rodgers would have went down and scored again. Maybe not. Who knows? But, you know, the following week, they lost to Seattle. Seattle goes to the Super Bowl. They don't give the ball to Marshawn. Gives your Patriots another Super Bowl, Brockman. Could this have been different if Dez was given that catch? Obviously, we'll never know. But to me, that's just something that that pain's never going to go away. And that is a huge what if for me. And that's coming in. That's coming in at number three. Um, Number two, basketball. Uh, In 1997, the Boston Celtics had the best odds to win the NBA lottery and land Tim Duncan out of Wake Forest. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, uh, the ping pong balls did not go Boston's way. You ended up with the sixth and the third pick, Brockman. And it came down to the Philadelphia 76ers and the San Antonio Spurs. And as that envelope got opened, I, I can still remember sitting in front of my TV pleading with the basketball gods to not let this be the Sixers. And of course the envelope at number two got opened and it was the Sixers, which led Tim Duncan to the Spurs. As we know, Duncan, Tim Duncan's gone on to become the greatest power forward of all time, five time NBA champion. But what if Brockman, what if Allen Iverson- the Celtics? And, yeah, I know. Well, beyond that, what if Allen <laughs> Iverson and Tim Duncan could have hooked up? How would this have changed everyone's thoughts about Allen? I, I, I'm not saying they would have won five rings, but you got to figure Allen would have got at least a ring with Timmy, right? Like, and so this one hurts a lot because we were so so close to getting Tim Duncan on the Sixers, and it, it just didn't happen. Um, and number one, my biggest what if in sports? I, this what if changes everything, guys. Changes everything that you know about sports. And that is, what if there was no color barrier in sports? Mm. You know, just imagine when Jackie Robinson he broke the color barrier in 47. But what if men of color were allowed to play 
before that. You know, you just imagine the matchups, all the great Negro League legends being able to play before that. The mm. Josh Gibsons, the Cool Papa Bells, the Joe Smokey Williams, Willie the Devil Wells, Buck Leonard, John Henry Lloyd, and that's just in baseball. And then you get like the Harlem Globetrotters, uh, Earl Lloyd, Chuck Cooper, Sweetwater Clifton, all broke the color barrier in the NBA. But what if they had been allowed to play from the start? I feel like sports obviously would have been different. We'd have been looking at a lot of different records and we had for as many great memories as you have of these sports before that. Just imagine if all these men were afforded the opportunity to play the sport that they excelled at together and you know that's tj's top five what ifs and as always let me know what you think and uh what are some of yours great stuff man um very thought-provoking compelling uh conclusion to that uh i have some thoughts on the other ones first of all uh thank you for not what if michigan had a timeout <laughs> nah, i'm gonna see okay, what i appreciate fan, that so. um couple things had the conversation there's a 30 for 30 coming up with Brady and Charles Woodson together talking about what Brockman and everyone in New England refers to as the snow game. Snow game. <laughs> um, oh, and I, I, I'm, I'm curious to hear what they have to say about it, yeah. you know, because, you know, the Raiders were a stout team, man. And that meant that that might have meant that let's just say they make the Super Bowl and not. Then Gruden made the Super Bowl with the Raiders, mm -hmm. right? As opposed to with the Bucks to beat the yeah. Raiders. Um, then what the conversation we would 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 uh, Bledsoe have gotten his gig back the next year? Maybe. There's that conversation. I just think Brady is just Brady, and that you know it would have happened anyway. Yeah, I had that as one, and I thought, but the Bill greatest gonna, show on yeah. turf would have most likely gone back to back. One yeah. would think, and then you know Vermeil would have been in this uh, Hall of Fame a long time before. Actually, that yeah, they they would Vermeil would have uh, no, that was Martz anyway, right? Uh, yeah, March. With March. Anyway, yeah, March. No, uh, you know, I, I, I still think that, you know, uh, Brady would have still had his career in the – everyone thinks that the dynasty wouldn't have happened. And then in terms of what if Dez had caught it, first of all, he did catch it. In the same way that the, the rule on the books was the tuck rule, the rule on the books was the way that they interpreted that catch. He did catch it, and it just showed you that, that receivers were just becoming so supremely physically yeah. talented that they could gain – 10 yards a first down in the process of falling down okay there were there would have been 452 to go and the packers would have had the ball yeah but you know, i mean the defense could have stopped aaron Rodgers. anything could have happened but there's it wasn't just like 30 seconds left yeah i realize that but there was a still. there was a third of the quarter still to come but i would have been wild if the catch rule was as it was then as it is today and the same thing with the tuck rule just, you, know, you know, that's some, the, some what ifs. That's the what ifs right there. Cooper Cup coming up uh, next hour, as is Tony Dungy, uh, right here on the Rich Eisen show. I think the biggest one, Rich, obviously, is the number one. Like, if you could have gotten oh, all please, those players, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> history has changed. Absolutely. You know, Jackie Robinson was a outstanding football player. Yeah. Yeah. For UCLA, he did everything. Yeah, he was like an yeah. outstanding football player. Like, Hall of Fame worthy if that's what he decided to play. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he was going to be great no matter what. Track, too, right? Yeah. So an incredible athlete. Maybe not even the best baseball player. I think it's on record not the best baseball player that got brought up. What he if was... the Blazers had drafted Michael Jordan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.